This is Jennifer Idol, explorer, author, photographer, and the first woman to dive all 50 US states. She also happens to be my dive buddy for today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. Uh, today's an awesome day. I'm diving with uh, my friend and author of An American Immersion, Jennifer Idol. Special day for us because we just hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. Apologize that my voice is absolutely terrible this morning. Um, we're going to be giving away one copy of An American Immersion to a lucky subscriber when we hit 1,000. Um, so if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. The details will be in the description below on how to enter to win a copy of Jennifer's book. So 50 states, five years. Was there ever a point where you felt like, I'm done, I can't do it, I can't go on. Is there any walls you hit? There were plenty of walls that I hit. <laughs> Some of them literally, but I uh, didn't feel like quitting at any time. I will say that there are two or three of us that have actually completed the 50 state journey and since I completed it, a couple of people have gone on the journey themselves. Wow, okay. And everyone who does the 50 state says uh, if you can get past the first 25, then you're more likely to be committed. It's really that first half when people drop out. Right. Uh, as far as did I feel overwhelmed at some point and go, why did I do this? There was absolutely some of that going on here yeah. and there and just the rigor of getting to a place on a self-funded expedition with limited time uh, was really hard to nail the shot and you know, running and gunning with a 16 hour drive, a day or two of diving and running and gunning back home so that you could get up at 8 a.m. for work the next morning. Right. Right, because you drove and camped for most of this and you were entirely self-funded, right? Yes. So you must have had like a lot of non-diving challenges as well. Oh yeah, I learned so much about camping. Uh, in fact, I just got back from Yellowstone National Park cool. and I took some of the same camping gear that I used in the 50 state journey. I was explaining to some of my colleagues there, like, you're sleeping in the 50 state tent. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. It all nice. took a beating and you learn oh, for sure. different things like always put the rain cover on your tent. Even if it seems absolutely like there's no chance of any precipitation, you definitely put the rain cover on. You learn that kind of stuff the hard way. Yeah, and pretty remote locations as well to get to, you know, places that aren't traditionally set up for diving, right? So a lot of planning involved, a lot of like, you know, where am I going to get my gas bills and so on. That's part of why I did all the driving, uh, because I can bring in all the gas I needed, my emergency oxygen, uh, any kind of first aid. It had to be all self-sufficient. And very often we'll also pack in all our food, all our water, uh, because you just never know yeah. what's going to happen, where you're going to go. And uh, I even bring my own little jump start kit for the car, because uh, we cool. got stranded at the top of a mountain once. Wow, where was that? Uh, Colorado. Okay. So we were taking the car up uh, from Texas in 90 degree weather, and it went down to like negative 10, because this was February. <laughs> We went up to the top of the mountain, went to sleep, woke up, car, no. Oh. The battery was like, forget you, this was too much of a temperature shift. Wow. And we had to beg for a job from a bakery truck at five in the morning. Wow. We were awesome. very lucky there was anybody on that mountain. <laughs> That's awesome. So the people that followed you in your quest, uh, did they reach out to you? Did you, you know, what advice would, did you offer them? Or anybody that was thinking of going on to do the 50? People didn't think about going on to the 50, more so as I approached them. Okay. They didn't really, I mean, a lot of them were friends. And I started with Ben Castro, who completed 27 states with me, right. which is a feat unto itself. It was quite a lot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I list uh, rec uh, acknowledgments in my book uh, to some of the people that helped me get there, because by the end of it, there were more than 75 dive buddies. Wow, okay. Yeah. I met a lot of people from all over. I'd call up dive shops, just kind of cold call, uh, and you know, pay for a dive master, and then they'd become a friend. Or, yeah. and I'm also part of a couple of dive teams. Cool. So I could pull from some of my dive teams and enlist their help or <laughs> kind of put the wool over their eyes. This will be awesome. <laughs> it won't be hard at all. <laughs> uh, but we had great fun uh, with the challenges. You know, it kept everyone problem solving and thinking. Uh, in these kind of fluid situations, you are always doing something for the entire length of the trip. I think like in terms of sense of achievement, I mean, the book is gorgeous. The photography is amazing. How did you celebrate such a, like a, a big achievement? I bought a souvenir at my last dive site. That's it? Yes. <laughs> no champagne, no like, you know. We were so worn and 
I was really just actually sitting out on a point in the Straits of Mackinac in Michigan all by Malonzi. Wow. And uh, went up to a lighthouse and it was just kind of like a nice little metaphor, a lighthouse, the beacon of the end of Bringing the Bringing you back to land, yeah. Right. So I, uh, I bought uh, three little lighthouses and gifted one to Ben and one to my mom and, you know, just to celebrate the people who had helped me along the way. So since you finished the challenge, obviously, like, all dive clubs probably want to hear from you and you've done a lot of speaking events and that kind of stuff. What do they always want to know? What, what are you always asked? What's your favorite spot to dive? What's your least favorite spot to dive? Um, everyone always wants to know about their state, and that's really one of uh, my favorite things, is talking about the connectivity to people's homes. People were completely unaware that they had these nice resources near them. Right. So it was nice to celebrate somebody's home. People really appreciate uh, when you have that sort of connection. Yeah, for sure. Maybe they don't know that they, there is diving in their state, they're landlocked or if they're, you know. Even divers. Right. They often, uh, a lot of people, they book a trip, go to the tropics. You know, it's a bit harder diving at home, particularly in the States, because it's uh, colder or maybe there's some more advanced training that you need to get for that. But I would say going to the tropics is deceptively easy. It's not actually easy for right. people. They just, it's a state of mind, really. Um, before we off that, right here today, you guys, we came to the book. So I got all the rules that we can take again. But most important, you guys, he's going to tell you how to safely get off and back on this boat. That nice little green light on the back. Vacuum seal. Vacuum seal, green light, yeah. I always like to see that. Don't want to see the screaming red light. No. Don't want to hear the screaming red light. No, that's not fun. I heard that once on the ship. The screaming, like... Oh, I went down on the Oriskany, down to 220. Yeah. And I hit 180, and all of a sudden, beep, beep, uh -oh. beep. And there's nothing you can do at that point. I mean, at this point, you're starting to incur your deco obligations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, keep going. Camera's still firing. <laughs> Did the whole dive, came up, and uh, what it was was the pressure made the point contacts. Touch Make it feel another. like, yeah. Yeah, so it thought it was uh, flooded and it was not. So what's the housing rated to? Deeper than I go. What's next? <laughs> what's the next? You've done 50 stakes, I mean, what's next? What, how do you top that? How do you, like, what's the next adventure? Well, you, you don't top that, you start exploring more. So at the root of everything, I'm an explorer. <laughs>
Hang on, give me a boost. Getting sick. That's my glove. <laughs> You're not going to pick me up by my pink. That's not going to happen. No, no I just uh, could hear it all. So they could be anywhere. But I got all excited. <laughs> There's dolphins! <laughs> He got a bunch of pictures of a frog underwater. Frogfish? Oh, frog kid. No, you're good. Good posture. So, this is the Jennifer Idol quick fire, no giggle challenge. You ready? Sure. Straight into the lens, answer as honestly and as fast as you can. Okay. Right. Which state was first? Utah. What state gave you a surprise animal encounter? Paddlefish, Tennessee. Any unexpected delight? Delight? Yes. Uh, Seattle. Uh, giant Pacific octopus, wolf eels, the giant plumes and anemones. It blew my mind away. I was on my way to Hawaii and Seattle was better. Alright. Now the giggle challenge is up already. Let's see. Uh, most remote dive site? Most remote. Yellowstone. Best fizz? Uh, Oregon, Clear Springs, uh, in, near Portland. Nice. 50th state? Michigan. Straits of Mackinac. Wrecks, reefs, rivers, or caves? All of the above. Fresh or salt? All of the above. Wet or dry? Mostly dry. Favorite camera brand? Uh, I mean, I shoot with a Nikon, uh, so I guess that's a favorite camera brand. <laughs> you can't, I can't distract you at all. You're like, I'm like pulling faces back here and you're like just focused on the lens. Uh, housing brand? Not a camp. I love the ergonomics. Excellent. Lighting brand? I non strobes. Excellent. I like the strobes, uh, 10 years old. I'm looking forward to someday getting the new ones they just came out with. Nice. And uh, sun protection? Stream to sea. <laughs> Absolutely. That was a test. Safe. <laughs> no. It's the only reef safe brand out there. Five, I couldn't distract her at all. Not at all. I was making faces. No, 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 no. Nothing. Nothing. With that, you find it smoking. Well. Did you know that a cowboy hat is based off of a 19th century Mexican uh, hat? The things learn on dive boats. <laughs> Everyone needs a hobby. Rich more than most. <laughs> So that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe at the bottom down below. Um, if you want to win that copy of Jennifer's An American Immersion that we're giving away here on the channel, the entry details for the competition are in the description to this video below. If you can't wait to get your hands on a copy of this book, I highly recommend the limited edition hardcover. It's got a lot more photos in it than the paperback. Uh, I'll put a link to the book where you can buy it directly below as well. Um, just super awesome to be able to dive with Jennifer, really um, tidy diver and just, just great fun to dive with. Um, super passionate about conservation and the books, full of fantastic shots of unexpected dive places. It was just really refreshing to be able to watch a professional photographer of Jennifer's caliber work and see the focus that she brings to her craft. Everything from composing the shot to chasing down Barracuda to get the right angle to the care and preparation that she takes to make sure that all of her gear is tested pre-dive, taken care of after the dive. Just just fantastic to see someone work to that level of detail. Um, I've got to go and do something about my voice because I'm, I'm losing it here. And uh, we've got a lot of videos to make this week, so that's not good. So I'm going to wrap this up now. We're going to head to lunch, and I'm going to go find a hoodie and a cup of hot tea. Uh, until next time, my name's James, and this was Your Divers Ready. Take care. Have you thought about tea, James? Yes. <laughs> I think about it often. I just didn't this morning.